So today on Nature's Always Right with Stephen Cornett, I'm gonna give you my best advice. If you are new to raising chickens or you're looking into raising chickens, this is the video for you because I'm gonna show you and give you a bunch of tips on raising chickens, especially when it comes to your coop setup. So let's get into it. So if you're considering buying versus building your own chicken coop, this is a really great option. And what I have here is a dog kennel. This is an eight foot by four foot kennel. I think I bought it for about $200 and I just looked and they're about $250 right now at Tractor Supply. Now, if you were to go buy one of those pre-made coops from Tractor Supply or a feed store or something, it's even more money. Um, they are nicer, they have all the things set up, but this is a fantastic option. The reason I'm even using this is because we actually bought this for our dog, uh, but we ended up not needing it because we can keep her in the house now um, if we go out for the day. So I was left with this kennel, but it's fantastic for animals and as a primary or secondary coop. I love that it's made out of metal. I can take this thing apart I can add on another kennel to this and make it bigger if I wanted. It's just enough room for, I have seven chickens, and I think you could fit up to 10 chickens in something like this, but I'm free ranging them. So they're only in here at night, and then in the morning I let them out and they can go anywhere on my property to forage for food. So when it comes to chicken coops, there's a few different things that you wanna consider. You're either gonna do 100% confinement, you're going to do um, like a mixed confinement. So I can leave them in here for a few days and just give them food and they're fine. Or you can do a total free range, which they would just go into their coop at night so they're protected in the morning, they come out and go do their thing. So this is nice because you can do confinement and free range at the same time, as long as you have 10 or less chickens. And typically what you wanna go by is, you know, about five square to six square feet per bird in a coop like this. Uh, where you could keep them in there for a few days. On a coop where they just sleep in there at night, you could pack them in there up to two square foot a bird, um, but that's a coop that you need to open them, up, open them up in the morning. Now, if you wanna do a coop that gives them a lot more size, that's way better. If you're gonna keep them confined at all times, then I'd recommend doing 10 to 15 square foot per bird for the actual run area. And if you wanna see an amazing chicken coop that I built uh, back in my San Diego property, check this video out. It's automatic for water, for food, uh, deep letter, litter mulch bedding, um, it's the ultimate, like I, there's basically no changes that I would even make to that coop, even to this day, um, after raising chickens for over six years, that I would make to that coop, so. Um, but that was an expensive coop to make, it took me a ton of time to build it. This, you can buy it, set it up, and you're ready to go. Um, and if I ever build another permanent coop in the future, or when I build my mobile coop, I have this as a backup for sick chickens, or if I wanna raise baby chicks, or um, it has so many different options. I could do rabbits in here. So that's why I'm a big fan of these dog kennels now, uh, having some experience with them. You'll notice down here on the bottom, I do have some one inch chicken wire. I'd even recommend half inch here on the bottom because there are animals that can reach through and grab a chicken and kill it like a raccoon. And I've actually had that happen before on coops. So definitely recommend a half inch or up to one inch mesh um, along this bottom portion here. Uh, for their roosts, all I did was jam a couple small logs through the cage here. Free, simple. Okay, now let's go ahead and let the, the uh, girls out so they can go free range and let's go inside of the coop where I'm gonna give you some more recommendations on feed, minerals, and water, and all that good stuff. So my chickens that you just saw, they are half game bird and half Rhode Island red. And I got them from my neighbor for free. I definitely do not recommend any type of game bird just because they are pretty crazy. They're a bit harder to train. And I'll touch on that right now. When you start a new chicken coop, or you get new chickens, if you don't raise them from chicks, let's say you buy them as layers, they're already laying eggs or close to that, you're gonna have to get them used to this new coop and teach them that this is their home and this is where they sleep. So what I recommend doing is just keeping those uh, chickens in their coop for three, four days. Don't let them out, don't let them free range so they get very used to this place. The food and water is here so that when they do go out in free range, whether you're using electric netting or not, They'll go out, do their thing, and they'll come back here to resupply food or get some more grain or whatever they want, or come back here to lay their eggs. I would recommend for egg layers that you get any type of heritage breed. They have good instincts. These are breeds that have been around in the United States. 
um, for at least 100 years, I believe, most of these breeds. So the uh, Buff Orphington, the Plymouth Rock or Barred Rock, the Black Astralor, those three are fantastic birds. If you want a chicken that lays green eggs, get the Americana. If you want chickens that lay really large eggs, get the Black Jersey Giants or the White Rhode Island Reds. I've had those that are fantastic. There's just so many good breeds out there. So read about them and pick the attributes that you like. If you have kids, I think that maybe Wyandots are the nicest, most gentlest chickens that I've personally experienced. So I'm feeding them an organic soy-free grain. Now, it's quite interesting, when you let a chicken free range, they don't eat as much of this. So when you're raising a chicken completely in confinement, all they have to eat is the grain or anything else that you bring into this coop to feed them. Uh, so if you wanna dramatically reduce the cost of your feed, increase the nutrition and health of your birds, I highly recommend free ranging, period. You should always do it if you're able to. Now, you might be in a situation um, like an apartment or small backyard, um, and in that case, that's okay, don't worry about it. Do a deep mulch or layered bedding system with leaves or wood chips or straw, and then bring in garden waste or kitchen waste and throw that in here with them, and that will give them some extra supplementation into their diet. Now for water, it's just fresh water. I replace this as soon as they drink it down, you know, about three days, and I replace this for them. I rinse it out, I clean it, and then I would clean it with vinegar, you know, every couple months, just like it gets algae and gross. And, you know, you're just trying to prevent any diseases that might happen for your chickens. Um, so keeping things clean is very important. Also, you'll notice on the coop here, it's pretty gross. I need to add in some more carbon. So I'm gonna use the leaves that have fallen from the trees here uh, again and layer it in so they can manure on to that. Um, and just have a healthier, more cleaner environment so that when they kick their grain out and they're eating it off the floor, they're not eating some of their uh, poop all the time. So there's a bunch of benefits of doing a deep layer mulch bedding like this. And ideally you're gonna have like a foot of carbon material in here. And what this does is creates a ton of awesome compost that you can use out in your garden. In my San Diego coop, I would clean that thing out probably every three months, make a big compost pile. And that's what fed my market garden for most of my compost needs. And this is also gonna provide a much less smelly environment because as the chickens kick things up, the carbon will mix with their manure, the microbes will neutralize the smell, and it'll just have a much nicer setup. And my chicken coop in San Diego was right up against a fence with my neighbor, never had any complaints of the smell. Um, I also sprayed out lactic acid bacteria and other microbes out in here. Korean natural farming style. Now that's another way to increase the health of your chickens as well as help to break down the smells and this manure into really amazing soil. So whether you're doing a 100% confinement or partial confinement like I'm doing, I always recommend that you add some type of carbon into your chicken coop. Another thing that you need for your chickens is some chicken grit. Uh, which is in the form of small rocks. You need something that has calcium carbonate. So whether that's uh, oyster shells or uh, dead coral, uh, you can also use their uh, eggs. You can crunch those up and then feed those eggshells back to them. They can get their calcium from that, but it just increases um, the eggs will have a very hard shell and that's a, quite different from store-bought eggs. Also inside of here, I like to give my chickens and all my animals uh, kelp, sea salt, so they have access to that um, and they can kind of pick and choose what they want. Increasing mineral content, whether that's for the soil, for humans, for animals, uh, dramatically increases our health and all of the systems of our bodies work better. And what's so amazing when you raise your own chickens and if you've ever had a truly organically pasture raised egg, maybe from a friend or something, crack that egg next to a 99 cent dozen from Walmart and I want you to look at those <laughs> eggs and tell me there's not a difference and taste them and tell me there's not a difference because it is quite shocking when you see that golden yolk versus that pale yellow, it breaks when you drop it in your pan egg. So um, the amount of nutrition from chicken eggs is immense. I eat eggs almost every single day and uh, once these girls start laying, I'm gonna start eating raw eggs and incorporating that into my diet um, every single day. It's just a nutrient powerhouse, one of the most uh, beneficial foods, in my opinion, that uh, you could be eating for your diet. So now let's quickly talk about where are they gonna lay their eggs. So for collecting the eggs, I'm using a roll-away nest box 
And in the past, I've built them. Um, one really great way to build a cheap one is just you get some milk crates, put some straw on the bottom of that, and that's it, they'll lay in those. Um, I wanted to get this to just experiment with it and experience it and to uh, have cleaner eggs uh, once they lay them. Because if, if you're using like the standard setup where it's just flat, sometimes they can end up pooping on the eggs and you have to clean them more and stuff like that. So to avoid that, um, I'm gonna try this. Now a nest box should be up a little bit higher than this. I just never put something in here to make that happen because I'm working on a mobile chicken coop right now. My chickens are not old enough yet to lay. They're almost there. They're very close to their, you know, probably six month mark where they're gonna start laying their eggs. Um, so I don't know how well this works yet, even on the ground. Um, but there's a couple suggestions for you for your nest box. So I think the last major thing to recommend to consider is do you want just hens or do you also want a rooster? Now, when I was living in San Diego, I lived in a suburban area. I was actually allowed to have a rooster according to the city, but I've got neighbors all surrounded by me, my landlords, and um, so I didn't want to have that noise for them. But here, I want a rooster. Um, and there's a few reasons for that. One, the rooster is prey protection as well as a uh, food finder. The rooster will go out, look for things, and he will call the girls over to them if he finds some good worms or whatever he may find. He's also looking around for predators even more than the hens are and will alert them um, if there is something. So he provides a small amount of protection for them. He will also fertilize the eggs, which provides more nutrition in the eggs. Um, in America, it's pretty hard to find fertilized eggs, but in other countries, um, like when I lived in South Korea, you could buy eggs that are fertilized. And then the final reason for me to have a rooster is I will have a constant production of new chicks that I could raise up to either just be a meat bird or to have more layers, or I could sell them to people, or I wanna increase the size of my flock, introduce new genetics, you know, all sorts of cool things. And that's the other great reason for having a rooster.